let's get this ball rolling. Have you ever wondered how to foster a culture of respect and productivity in a world where political opinions can be diverse and divisive at work? Well, rise and shine leaders. This is Glenn Guyton, keynote speaker and workplace trainer. It's time for our executive coffee break. I have my beverage in hand. I'm trying to get my mouth working this morning. I hope you have yours too. They say you can't choose your family, but you can choose your workplace culture and you can choose your beverage. Today, I am drinking coffee, just straight coffee this morning. Leadership matters. So you might as well. Get good at it. And yes, I know that's not good grammar, but I like the way that sounds. Well, today we are going to dive into a topic that I think is going to become increasingly relevant as we move into this presidential election cycle. I mean, we're we're almost there, like Super Tuesday is coming up. So establishing clear policies on political activism. It's something you should be thinking about right now. Uh, In an era where political discussions are becoming more and more polarized, we have to learn how to balance free speech. And, you know, free speech is really talks about the government. But we do want freedom of uh, of communication in the workplace. So how do we balance free speech with respectable and a respectful and productive a a productive work environment and that's crucial so uh, i wrote a blog post i put the link into uh in my in in the description about the blog post that i wrote on the subject but let's talk about it uh how do we navigate this delegate balance now i don't care who you who you vote for Uh, I, i don't you could be republican democrat uh, libertarian, uh, Green Party, what, whatever, you, whatever you are, uh, but people will definitely have opinions about what's going on in in the workplace, and so I'll give you five five ways uh, of thinking about establishing your policies. But I want just want us to think about what impact will this have on your workplace, and maybe you already have a, a clear policy uh, in regard to political activism at work, or just even these political discussions. Because people are going to feel some type of way, no matter who gets elected, whether it's uh, Joe Biden, whether it's Nikki Haley or Donald Trump, whoever gets elected, people will have feelings. And I think people will have significant feelings in this era. And and there are so a few other things that you need to think about, depending on what area you work in, uh, who becomes president will have an impact on how we do things such as diversity, equity, inclusion, uh, work, uh, maybe even ha- will have some effect on health care. Uh, interest rates, all, all of all of those things are going to be kind of crazy. I think uh, it, it, within the next six 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 to ten months, uh, as we move into this, get get closer to the actual election. So, some type of disruption is going to happen, and we need to be ready for it. You need to be prepared for it as a as a leader uh, to get ready for what's coming. Don't don't wait. Don't wait. Uh, till it's too late. Uh, don't wait till people get all in their feelings. Start talking about these things now. When now? Start talking about these things with your leaders, your managers. How are you going to navigate these politics? Because it's probably ramping up just a little bit. But as we get closer and closer to the election, uh, it's going to become more and more intense. Again, depending on who becomes uh, president, uh, even you know who becomes the nominee, it, there are going to be some intense feelings around this, particularly right as the election uh, hits and right after the election. So do you need a policy? That's number one. As we think about establishing policies, do you need a policy? I think you need something. I do think you need a policy. I mean, it's it's, it's essential to identify what type of policy you need in your workplace. Again, you may have some specific limitations on what you can and can't do based on your uh, industry. So make sure you, you think about that. Do you need a need a policy in particular do you need a policy because of your work environment or because of who your 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 clients are uh if you are uh the head of a the a democrat 
the Democrat uh, industry, then you probably don't want to have a Republican talk in your business. If you are a Republican company, I don't know what that would be. I'm just making up stuff now. But if you are the Republican beverage company, uh, you might not want to have any Democratic uh, beverage discussions in your workplace. I'm, I'm being a little silly, but you understand what I'm saying. If you work at, at Coke, you're probably not going to work walk into Coca-Cola drinking a Pepsi. I, I think that's even a rule. I'm, if you work for Coke or Pepsi, let me know. But I think you can't drink the, the competitor's beverage, uh, at least not openly, in, in the workplace. So do you need a policy? Uh, you know, whether it's a drop in productivity, a discomfort amongst team members or conflicts arising, these are the indicators that you may need a policy, that something may be necessary. And I, again, I want you to be proactive as a leader. I want you to think about these things, see what will happen before it, it happens. And I want you to start having these conversations. Maybe you don't need a policy. Maybe you just need to have a conversation uh, to increase in where, awareness. Maybe you already have a policy and maybe you just need to review it. Hey, hey, y'all remember, I know um, we're entering the political season. Uh, we all have the right to pick and choose who we want to be our president or other elected officials. And so remember that, uh, that we encourage people to do their civic duty, but at the same time, this is our focus here at work. These are our values and these are the things that we will continue to do. So uh, think about that. And some now some, some companies are overtly political and donate to specific political parties. If that's you and it works for you, that's, that's fine. But I'm, I'm talking to people that need to think through this because it may be disruptive. Next, designing a policy. So number two, designing a policy. Once you have identified your need, the next step is to craft policy content. And this involves setting clear guidelines on what is considered acceptable political expression in the workplace. We want to be fair. We want to be balanced. It's about finding the balance between allowing freedom of speech in the workplace and ensuring that that freedom doesn't infringe on others' rights to be I'll say comfortable and productive in a workplace. You don't want it to be so much of a distraction. There are certain things that you need to accomplish at work and your, your policies should reinforce those things. And again, when I say freedom of speech, that doesn't mean that there's freedom of consequences. You can't say everything in the workplace. The government can't infringe on speech, but you can't you can actually infringe upon speech if you uh, are a private em employer. We just want to do it fairly. Uh, we want to make sure that we are in whatever legal compliance that we aren't arbitrarily discriminating against people who are a certain group. Number three, engaging your stakeholders. So the third step as we think about policies, as we think about politics in the workplace, uh, we want to get the support of our stakeholders. That includes our employees. Uh, we want to have discussions with a HR legal teams and with key leaders to ensure the policy is thorough enough, but it's also compliant with whatever state laws or other regulatory things that we have to deal with in our particular work environment. Engaging with employees for their input I mean, is, is really valuable to gain insights and foster a sense of ownership and acceptance. And this is one of, one of the areas where you can get your uh, employee resource groups involved. I mentioned that in the, in the blog post that I wrote, but get your employee resource groups involved. So then you get the input from different demographic groups or different interest groups, uh, right? So if you have a veterans em employee resource group, if you have one for for black people, if you have one for for women, if you have one for uh, disabled people, all of those different groups may have different opinions on political activism or political discussion in the workplace. Bring them in. You have these ERGs set up, utilize them, get your money's worth out of them. Uh, get their opinion, get their feedback, and, and you'll know that you have engaged your employees, engaged other stakeholders. And you may even have stakeholders, some of your um, your suppliers, uh, vendors, uh, uh, your policies may impact them. So think through that, get their input or, you know, review their documents to see, see how this will impact them. Um, know your client base. That's an important part of it. I know there are some brands out there that are that are staunchly political, you know, some very progressive brands, and then you have some other other brands that are um, maybe more traditionally conservative. I think like uh, 
we'll use a company. We'll just say Starbucks and, and Black Rifle Coffee. I think they have the li- uh, different political bits. I think that they would probably endorse different presidential uh, candidates. They have a different focus. You know, I went, I, I went into, I think, the Black Rifle Coffee place, and I think they re- are really like uh, supportive of, of veterans, uh, and 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 that's part of w- what their moniker is. And I know then you have Starbucks is really into other social justice type type issues, and so. Brands can have a political bent, and they may that may influence your policy. Uh, that you may really be catering to one type of of client, right? Your your customers are important stakeholders, and so think about that as you get into this system. Uh, that's what we have to do as leaders. What is the impact of this election, the political activism on our uh, stakeholders at at every level? Next. Uh, I think number four, implementing the policy. Communication is key. Go back and look some, at some of my other posts. Communicate, communicate, communicate. Transparency is in communication is so important. Communication is key when you are implementing the new policy. This means clearly articulating the policy to all employees through multiple channels, multiple channels, and ensuring that everyone understands the expectations and the reasoning behind the policy. Give some reason behind it. Tell a story if you know of an incident that happened. Uh, that cause disruption in the workplace. Let people know why you have these policies and then have some type of training. It could be a short video. Get on uh, Skype or not Skype. We don't use Skype, Slack. Get on Slack and and record a short video. Have HR uh, do a series of presentations, send out some detailed e- emails, give a step-by-step, give uh, some role plans, some scenarios of what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. Training sessions can be helpful to address any questions and to discuss um, possible things that can happen. Make sure you've done some role playing with your primary supervisors. Uh, Write out some scripts. It's so easy now, right? You can use technology. You can use AI, ChatGPT, all all of these different things, tools that you can use. You can uh, use AI to create flow charts. You can use AI to... Uh, create pictures and images to write out some scripts for you. So it's not that hard. It doesn't take a lot to do this and to do it do it where, well, fairly well, so that you can get the word out to your employees. They can understand uh, how to live out that policy. That's that's really important, letting, letting people know how to live out these policies. Don't just send an email and say, hey, well, you knew the policy. Don't just stick it up in the break room and say, hey, you knew the policy. That's not going to be that's not gonna be helpful. Next, uh, number five, uh, make sure that you monitor and revise the policy as needed. You may have had a policy uh, back in 2008. This is 2024. Update that policy. Look at it, review it, blow the dust off of it, and get it ready for this next election cycle. And we want to see if the policy was effective. Uh, Did it work? What were the the trouble points of the last policy that you had? And again, we want to solicit feedback from employees, Look at the workplace dynamics, uh, stay informed on the legal and societal changes. Notice I say legal and societal changes. So expectations change. So your policies need to change. Expectations change in the workplace. So your policies need to change as well. All right. That policy that you did in the last election cycle, it ain't going to fly. It ain't going to fly. It's not. Look at it again. Go look at it again. Make sure it's relevant and that it's compliant uh, with whatever's going on now. So, um, again, I wrote a blog post. You all can check that out. I put the link in the uh, the information. It's in the it's in the link for the description on LinkedIn. It's in the description on YouTube. Uh, but setting clear policies isn't just about restrictions. That's not what we're we're not trying to restrict people, but we want to foster a culture of respect and understanding. Uh, we're, we're not trying to censor people. It's about pro- being proactive and being prepared before issues arise. And so that's what leaders do. Leaders set the tone for a collaborative, inclusive, and productive workplace. Set the tone, leaders. Set the tone. Don't be afraid to lead. Don't be afraid to lead. Think about what's next. You're out front as a leader. I want you to be out front of disruption that could possibly happen in this political environment. And again, I don't care who you vote for. I know who I'm voting for. And uh, 
you, also you probably need to vote for all the people, not just president. Think about all the other folks that impact your life. Uh, the 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 cow commissioner, all these other things, land commissioner, all whatever, the the school board chairman, whatever. Think about all those things. But you know, the political uh, debate is the one that people are going to be all in uproar about. So pay attention, leaders. Be a leader. Be proactive. Think about what's going to move your organization forward and not uh, allow you to be disrupted, disrupted, disrupted when things occur. So my challenge for you today, I challenge you to review your current policies on political activism. Consider how you can improve or implement policies uh, that respect free speech while ensuring a respectful and productive work environment. Think about how you can be a leader in this area setting an example for others to follow. So as we close, let's not forget the strength and perseverance it takes to lead with empathy and inclusivity. Better leaders get better results. So to every one of you leading the charge for a more supportive and engaging workplace, I leave you with this. Stay bold, stay inspired, and remember that your actions today shape the culture of tomorrow. I'm Glenn Geisen, friends. You have a wonderful, 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 wonderful day.